Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Now everybody wave hello, wave hello, wave hello. Everybody wave hello, hello, and how are you? Good morning, Orange Room kids. Sorry I wasn't here yesterday. I had to go to the grocery store. Wow, when was the last time you were at a grocery store? Well, I got what I needed, a lot of stuff. I got a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables and well, that's kind of about it. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. It was a lovely day yesterday. It's not so great today. It's a bit rainy. So uh, we might be inside today. I don't know. I might not even get to take my run, though I really should. Anyway, I feel good. I'm here. It's warm in the house. Uh, everybody's doing their work, except me, because I'm with you, hanging out and having fun. I have my cup of coffee, and I have today's book. Thidwick, The Big-Hearted Moose, by Dr. Seuss. Another favorite. Up at Lake Winnebango, the far northern shore, lives a huge herd of moose, about 60 or more, and they all go around in a big happy bunch looking for nice tender moose moss to munch. Up at Lake Wan Winnebango, one day they were lunching, just strolling along and enjoying their munching, for the moose moss that day was especially fine when it happened that Thidwick the last moose in line saw a bingle bug sitting. The bug called out, Hey, it's such a long road and it's such a hot day. Would you mind if I rode on your horns for a way? Do you see the bingle bug? Bingle bug is there. And there is the very accommodating Thidwick. Of course not, smiled Thidwick, the big-hearted moose. I'm happy my antlers can be of some use. There's room there to spare, and I'm happy to share by be my guest, and I hope that you're comfortable there. So the bingle bug picked out a nice easy seat, and the moose went on looking for moose moss to eat. Well, an hour or so later... The bug heard a squeak, and he heard a small voice of a tree spider speak. I say, said the spider, you've got a fine place. The moose seems quite friendly, has such a nice face. If I got on too, do you think he would mind? Hop aboard, laughed the bug. And I think that you'll find that the moose won't object. He's the big-hearted kind. I accept, said the spider, with joy and delight, and he started a web on the horn to the right. Boink. Well, while the spider was spinning, he heard a gay song, and a fresh little zinazoo bird came along. He stopped and he stared and he chirped, well, 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 what a smart place to build, what a great place to dwell. I've been living on trees ever since I was born, but here's something new, why not live on a horn? If there's room there for two, then there's room there for three. There's plenty of room left, the bug, and it's free. There's the bird. There's the bug. There's Thidwick. Thidwick stopped walking. What was all that talking? These guests had caught Thidwick, the moose unawares. Hey, he called out. What goes on there upstairs? Let's have a look. Just building a nest, sir, the Zinazoo said, and began yanking hairs out of poor Thidwick's head. And he plucked out exactly 204. Don't worry, he laughed. You can always grow more. Does Thidwick look happy right now? Not really. Uh, then he dozed off to sleep in his fine moose hair nest. This bird, murmured Thig Thidwick, is sort of a pest. But I'm a good sport, so I'll just let him rest. For a host, above all, must be nice to his guest. See where the bird's nest is? What would you do if someone built a bird's nest on your head? Would you be happy about that? You probably would, wouldn't you? Knowing you. 
I don't know if I'd be too happy. Let's check and see if uh, Chris has a bird's nest on his head. Not yet. It's getting longer though. <clears throat> Besides now, it's getting quite late in the day and surely tomorrow they'll all go away. But alas, the next morning, the sun's early light brought to Thidwick's sad eyes a most unwelcome sight. Meet my wife, said the bird. I was married last night, and perhaps, by the way, I should mention to you that her uncle is coming to live with us too. You're a very fine host, so I knew you'd be willing. Uh-oh. <laughs> then the uncle, a woodpecker, started in drilling. Woodpeckers, right? Brrr. All Thidwick's friends shouted, Get rid of those pests! I would, but I can't, sobbed poor Thidwick. They're guests. Guess indeed, his friends answered. All of them frowned. If those are your guests, we don't want you around. You can't stay with us because you're just not our sort. And they all turned their backs and walked off with a snort. Was that nice? His friends are mad at him because he's being nice to all these people. That's not nice at all. Maybe they could have helped him out. But instead they walked away. Let's see what happens. He does not look happy. Now the big friendless moose walked alone and forlorn with four great big woodpecker holes in his horn. What holes? whispered Herman, a squirrel who spied him. What holes to hide nuts in? Hmm, mind if I try them? <sighs> They're yours, called the woodpecker. Get right inside them. The big hearted moose runs a public hotel. Bring your nuts, bring your wife, bring your children as well. So the whole squirrel family all jumped in. Pell mell. Boing. Oh, wow, look. <laughs> and the very next thing the poor animal knew, a bobcat and turtle were living there too. Now, what was the big hearted moose going to do? Well, what would you do if it happened to you? You couldn't say scat, because that wouldn't be right. You couldn't shout scram, because that isn't polite. A host has to put up with all kinds of pests, for a host, above all, must be nice to his guests. So you try hard to smile and you try to look sweet and you go right on looking for moose moss to eat. Nah, by now, but now it was winter and that wasn't easy for moose moss gets scarce when the winter gets freezy. The food was, food was soon gone on the cold northern shore of Lake Winnebango. There just was no more, and all Thidwick's friends swam away in a bunch to the south of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. He watched the herd leaving, and then Thidwick knew he'd starve if he stayed here. He'd have to go too. You see all the other mooses? He stepped in the water then, oh what a fuss, stop, screamed the guest, you can't do this to us, these horns are our home and you've no right to take our home to the far distant side of the lake. Be fair, Thidwick begged with a lump in his throat. We're fair, said the bug, we'll decide this by vote. And those, all those in favour of going say aye, all those in favour of staying say nay, aye, shouted Thidwick. But when he was done... Nay, they all yelled. He lost 11 to 1. We win, screamed the guest, by a very large score, and poor starving Thidwick climbed back on the shore. Then do you know what these pests did? They asked in some more. Wow, the nerve. Wow, what's that, a bear? A bear? They asked in a fox who jumped in from the trees. They asked in some mice and they asked in some fleas. They asked a big bear in and then, if you please, came a swarm of 362 bees. Poor Thidwick sank down with a groan to his knees and then, then came something that made his heart freeze. Oh, oh. <gasps> Bullets came zinging right past Thidwick's face. Guns were bang-binging all over the place. You see what these are? Hunters. Get that moose! Get that moose! Thidwick heard a voice call. Fire again and again and shoot straight, one and all. We must get his head for the Harvard Club wall. Ugh. Thidwick took to his heels with the load on his head. With 500 pounds on his horns, the moose fled. He could have run faster without all those pests, but a host after, after all must be nice to his guests. You see all these 
nasty mean hunters. Up canyon, off cliff, over wild rocky trail, with bullets bang bouncing around him like hail. Up gully, through gulch, down slippery sluice, with his hard-hearted guest raced the soft-hearted moose. Then finally they had him. Because of those pests he had run out of luck, because of those guests on his horns, he was stuck. You see, he's stuck. Poor Thidwick. He gasped, he felt faint, and the whole world grew fuzzy. Thidwick was finished completely. Or was he? Finished? Not Thidwick. Decidedly not. It's true he was mo in a most terrible spot. But now he remembered a thing he'd forgot. A wonderful something that happens each year to the horns of all moose and the horns of all deer. Today was the day Thidwick happened to know... That old horns come off so that new ones can grow. And he called to the pests on his horns and he threw them. You wanted my horns, now you're quite welcome to them. Keep them, they're yours. As for me, I shall take myself to the far distant side of the lake. And off he went. And he swam Winnebango and found his old bunch and arrived just in time for a wonderful lunch at the south side of the lake where the moose moss was there to munch. His old horns today are where you knew they would be. His guests are still on them, all stuffed as they should be. Well, um, I know we're talking about bugs this week. So today you can tell your parents that I posted some bug stories. And I think Lauren and Monsi are going to post some stuff as well. So you can enjoy that and I'll be back later. Bye.